Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64academy.com, and today I want to show you how you can remove distractions in a symmetrical composition just like this. We have this ugly little tool chest or something that's destroying the whole composition here. We can easily make it disappear and add a really cool finishing touch to this. So let's jump into Photoshop because I got a lot of cool stuff to show you. So just a little bit of background on this photograph. Recently, my wife and my sons, we went to the Lackawanna National Historic Site, which is where in Scranton, Pennsylvania, they have an active train yard that you can actually walk out onto in a museum all about what happened in Scranton with the trains. It's, it's phenomenal. So uh, in the active train yard, you can see some old passenger trains. So here's one of those old passenger trains. Now, the reason why the highlights look all uh, scratchy and washed, like they're moving up and down, that's not an effect that happened in Photoshop. That's actually because the window that I was shooting through to take this shot had a bunch of scratches all over it. So the light that you're seeing there is actually reflecting inside those scratches and bouncing all around that piece of glass. So when I took the picture, this is the resulting image. Now, I really do like this photograph. The only problem that I see with this photograph is uh, right down here. So if we look right down here, you got this metal kind of uh, maybe like a toolkit or something like that that's in the front of the train. And that I don't really like too much because it throws off the whole uh, symmetrical composition, other than the fans obviously not being symmetrical and maybe some of the signs. This guy right here, our eye naturally goes right to it and it just ruins the whole magic of the photograph. So you naturally be thinking, okay, well, let me go ahead and go to the clone stamp tool and maybe take a, a spot from this seat and then just go over here and start cloning in from that seat. Well, the problem is, is that as you start cloning from that seat, you're going to start to grab uh, the arm from this chair. So that's not actually going to work for us. We can also try to use something like the spot healing brush where we just go over it real quick. And this might actually get us pretty close, but then we get all these different spots over here and it just doesn't look very good. You can try to clean it up, but still it, it doesn't look natural. Uh, so the best method for this is actually not to use a clone stamp at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the marquee tool and I'm going to select an area that's rather large around that box. So I'm going to go right about here all the way over to here. And this gives me enough room for uh, any error that I might incur while I do this. So with this, I'm going to go right inside this box. You see how when I'm inside this box, we get kind of like this move tool. I'm going to move this over to this side of the train. OK, and just, I'm just going to press control C for copy and control V for paste. And that's going to give me a new layer right here, right on top. So if I move this layer over, we're seeing this window and this portion of the seat. So if I move this right here, it's not quite going to work. However, if I press command or control T and then right click and say uh, flip horizontal. Now I can move this down and almost match this right up with that window and almost make it perfect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and press enter on this. And I'm going to change this to difference. And the reason why I changed this to difference is so that I can see the box that's underneath and what, what room I can actually use for my mask. So I'm going to make a mask right here because I don't want that hard edge. And I'm going to use a brush that's rather large and rather soft. So right click here and make it about 1200 pixels with a hardness of zero because I want this to be a really soft brush. And I'm just going to use my Wacom tablet and I'm going to slowly paint away this area here. So as I slowly paint this away, feathering it right up to that box, I can make a decent selection of that mask and then make that brush smaller. And as I make that brush smaller, I can start to brush away any line work that might be happening here, where we still get that hard edge that's residually left over from that. So now I'll change this back to normal. And when we look at this, it's, it's almost perfect. You know, we almost have this perfect uh, swatch there. The only problem is it, it doesn't quite match the old seat. So if you look at the old seat, it doesn't look like it's quite as blue as it is on that side. So we do need to do two things. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to curves and I'm going to make what's called a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is going to apply this curves adjustment layer only to what's directly below it. So if I press alt or option and click between that curves adjustment layer and that new layer that I made right here, you're going to see that it adds this down arrow. That's saying that anything that happens in this curve is only going to affect that one little spot that we just fixed there. So what I want to do with this curve, I definitely don't want to make it darker because that doesn't match. So I'm going to just move it up and make it lighter. 
So now it looks lighter, it starts to blend in and match what the old seat looked like. But there's one more thing that's wrong here. This is very blue, and the one before that was not quite so blue. So if we take this off, it looks like it's not quite as blue there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer, click that, and again, press Alt or Option to make a clipping mask to clip this Hue Saturation Adjustment layer into that uh, seat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the targeted adjustment tool and click right here. And that's going to say that it's definitely not blue. It's actually cyan that we're worried about. And all I'm going to do is drop the saturation down. So boom, there we go. So now we've got this perfect match. This seat almost perfectly matches where it was before and everything looks great. So now I'm going to show you one more really quick thing that you can use these color lookup tables that are actually found on F64 Academy. And you can go over here to color lookup and then change this down to Cine Maroon. And look at how we get this really nice effect on our photograph, this old sepia toned effect just with one click. Really quick edit on this one. It came straight out of Adobe Camera Raw with some very minimal settings. We came in here and we were done within six minutes and we have something very usable and very appealing. So what exactly did we do here? Well, let's run down again. What we did was we tried to use the clone stamp tool and that didn't work. We tried to use the spot healing brush and that didn't work. So what we did was we took a marquee tool and we made a selection from the other side of the train. This will work with just about anything that has symmetrical attributes or characteristics within the photograph. We made a selection for the opposite side. We pressed command or control T to transform it and flipped it horizontal so it would reverse it. We put it over on the other side of the train, changed the blend mode to different so we could see everything underneath. We made a mask and we blended it in. Now, in order to blend that in even better with the other side, we had to use those clipping masks for our curves adjustment layer to make it lighter and our hue saturation adjustment layer where we targeted and clicked what color that was and dropped the saturation down to make it blend nice and neatly. And the last thing we did was we add this nice artistic effect from the Cine collection on the F64 Academy site. There's a link right here that you can go ahead and go over to F64 Academy and download that. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64academy.com. If you like this tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, share it, tell a friend, and comment on it. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel because new cool tips like this in Photoshop are coming out all the time every Friday. Thank you very much for watching this. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you.